Hi. This is going to be a video of me inking a panel from The Stone King, which came out on Comixology Original uh, a few years ago, and we'll soon see a print edition through uh, Dark Horse Comics. It's kind of rare for me to record um, real-time video like this, um, so I thought I would go ahead and do a voiceover too to explain a little bit about what I'm doing and, and how I'm doing it. I usually start inking with a nib. Um, this one, in this case, this nib is a Hunt 108. And I use it because um, I can get very fine detail, um, very quick and easy. But it's also an incredibly flexible nib, so it can do um, a wide variety of lines. In fact, I think it makes a line that's very similar to a brush, where you can get a very fine point, and then um, with just a little bit of added pressure, get a really fat thick line. Um, one of the things about using a nib like this is that you kind of have to make your lines very quickly, otherwise you get a very um, jagged, wiggly line from just your hand shake. You know, when you ink with a brush, the, the bristles of the brush usually absorb that little bit of a hand shake, but um, with a nib it doesn't, doesn't do that, so you have to keep that nib moving really fast. I also took out the sound here, but you can hear there's an, there's an audible scratchiness to it that um, I know a lot of people hate, but it doesn't bother me at all. When I'm making marks with the nib, you can see that I start off kind of sideways and then follow around the curve so that the line can get fatter. Um, one of the properties of a nib is that if you go sideways, the tines cannot separate and it makes a very thin line. But as you drag up and down along sort of the axis of the nib so that the two tines can get further apart, then you get a much fatter line. I don't know if I'm making that very clear, but if you start playing with a nib, you'll, I think, quickly see what I'm talking about with that. And you can also see why I really like using this in conjunction with a brush, because it does make very brush-like lines. Here I'm using uh, FW acrylic ink, um, black obviously. Uh, right out of the bottle it's usually just right for using with a nib, but after it's been open for a little while sometimes um, I have to give it a little spritz of water in there to, to get it to flow really well off the tip of my nib. I use this ink mostly because um, it dries very close to completely waterproof. So when I paint over the top of it with my watercolors, um, the ink line will stay very crisp. And of course, if you sort of scrub on it really hard with a watery brush, it will sometimes start to blur the line a little bit. But generally, um, for most uses, it's very good for uh, multimedia effects. And you can see here I've switched over to my brush. I've decided I've made enough thin lines and I want to make some more thicker lines. Um, I'm using a Rosemary & Company uh, Kalinsky Sable brush. I had to recently switch to using their uh, red sable brushes because the um, you can no longer import the Kalinsky Sable, at least not through them, um, into the United States. It's something to do with... Uh, I don't know what it's to do with, actually. But it's a little frustrating. I really liked this brush. The brushes I'm using now are, are very good, but and they're a lot cheaper, but they're not quite as good as this. So you can see one of the things that I do is, with the brush, is spot a lot of blacks. And I make a lot of these sort of little impressionistic dashes that I like to make. Um, they feel really nice with a brush and are hard to make with a nib. You can also see that I use the the brush for sort of the outside lines or the, the contour lines, um, silhouette marks, um, because I like to have a nice fat line around um, the important forms to let them pop out. Especially once I start painting them, I think it looks kind of nice to have a really thick line uh, around the outside of the important shapes. And I like a lot of variety in my mark making. I like to have very, very thin lines and then also very fat lines. 
and have them sort of right next to one another. Um, I think it makes for a very sort of fun and energetic image to look at. It's a thing I stole from looking at Jack Davis comics. Um, if you're not familiar with Jack Davis, he's a classic cartoonist. Um, well worth your time to look him up and see what he does. Here you can see me sort of fattening up that silhouette and get the contours real beefy and, and fun. And you know, you can see here too how that nib line and the brush line sort of look like it's hard to tell which is which at this point. And um, that's really the way I like it. I like those. Like I use the nib because it's easy um, to get fine detail, but I want it to look cohesive. Like I want it to sort of look like the one tool was used, even though there are so many different kinds of marks going on. And that's pretty much it. That's how I inked uh, the Stone King. Since then, my inking process has evolved a little bit more. Um, I'll probably talk about that more in future videos, but uh, there you go. I hope you enjoyed this.